All right, another quick update. Uh, I took the calipers off of each of these wheels. Um, they look good, but part of me feels like, one, they're just there for show, so it's gonna add weight. Not, not much weight, but the other thing is, if something isn't quite aligned right, I think that disc in there would have end up, ended up rubbing. I don't know. Took them off anyways. The other thing I did was I ordered four foam tires, two up front that are skinnier, thicker ones in the back. The biggest reason for that is because the track in the back is smaller, so the thicker rears will help kind of balance it out. I put these turnbuckle things on. I kind of made some myself. I had, this is an over-exaggeration, but basically a very small version of this that I cut down even further and then put on the smaller ends and pivot balls so I can put that on both sides. I ordered a set of aluminum ones that are supposed to be for the front and rear for a 4GT or something like that. 2.0 body anyways, or chassis. Uh, these will work for now until those go in, come in the mail. Next, oh, some other upgrades, and I'll show this part in the video, but I bought some stabilizer bars for the front and rear. And then the next thing I'm gonna do real quick is take these arms off and the pins and wherever there's slop like this, and it's hard to show, but forward and back movement in the arm, I'm gonna add some shims to all four arms, and I've got shims some around here, but you guys essentially know what I'm talking about. Add shims, all four arms, and then that will really, really tighten up the suspension geometry. So, um, also added some spacers in the back because when this thing starts putting power down a lot of these cars they like to squat so if you look underneath and of course the battery's not in here right now but if the battery was you'd see the front there's a smaller gap between the top of the workbench and the bottom of the chassis than there is back here and you want that because when you're going down the road and you're getting on throttle this is going to squat down a little bit in the rear, at the same time, the downforce of the wind is gonna push the front down. What you wanna do is ensure that through the squat and the downforce, your chassis does not end up being further down in the back than it is in the front. Because as soon as that happens, wind will pick this right up and you'll flip and crash and it won't be a good thing. I know that from working on the Limitless. Um, so, still working on it, and excited to bring you guys along. Hope you enjoy this video to this point. Let's keep on working. Now, keep in mind, I'm doing all of this without even running the car one time. I just get so excited when I get a new project. I just want to go, 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 and do, do, do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, can't help it. All right, so this was easy enough to remove. You've got one, whoops. One screw up top from here, and then these two were on the outside, and this one was in the middle from underneath like this. And then where those pins go in, it's just right behind this cover here. So we'll take this all the way off like that. Add our shims so that it is nice and tight. Then put that back on and put everything back on like that. And for shims, this is what I'm using. You can pause the video, look at the exact size, but that will fit perfectly on these pins. All right, so as far as these shims and that size, they're 0 0.1 on the width. I use four on each side. And with these being plastic and pivot balls and all that, you're not gonna get rid of all of the slack, but any little bit that we can do to help out at least some is going to help this thing track straight. So you can see that it did indeed help out a little bit on that arm. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the rear. All right, you guys, the rear is even easier. So two screws on the outside, middle one is a little bit shorter and same thing as the front. This just slides right off. We can go ahead and add our shims right there.
All right, so same as the front. It didn't make a huge difference right on the tire end. If I flip this up and I grab just the arm and move that, I mean, that thing is really, really stiff. So really happy with the result here. Shimming your arms and those pins is a completely underrated step of this process. You guys learned it here. All right, so it looks like for that size spur, the best size on this side is a 22 tooth. And I'm gonna have to dremel this center plate out some more so that this can slide back just a little bit more. Right now it's hitting the plastic and it's not lining up perfectly. And it's not lining up with the spur as it should. And then this gear is a little bit thicker up here so I'm gonna have to open this up a little bit more all right you guys so here we go first run got everything trimmed up the way I should in order to get this to fit it sounds like the gear is not messed right but trust me I've checked it many many times it's good but let's see how this thing runs this thing's never been ran at all and the very first run is gonna be on 6s I am a little nervous. It does sound like a true speed car. All right, so it's wanting to coast to the left a little bit, so we'll fix that. Go to our steering trim. Really bounces around on these rocks. Mm. Easy, easy. <laughs> so that's spun out pretty easily. These tires, of course, they're ice cold. <laughs> I did not want to flip this body at all. There's a nice little bumper hit for you. I'm gonna turn that gyro all the way off. Notice it wants to go hard left. Now hard right.
Yeah, see how easy that thing spins out? All right, so nice quick little run here. Just gonna take it in. It drives. <laughs> Just gonna take a look at everything. Man, this thing does not like to stay straight, that's for sure. Pop the front, and now the rear off. Okay, check the temp on the motor real quick. Of course, it wasn't much, but always want to check, see where we're at. 118, 115. 118, 121, 122. Oh, sorry, guys. 123. You see, it's 122. 124. Six. Okay. So, definitely speed run gearing and setup. The steering does not really want to stay straight, so... I'm going to really look into that. Maybe I do need to go ahead and get those adjustable arms for this thing. But quick first run. Everything works. It runs. Um, tires are definitely slippery for what it is. But I've got tires coming. I've got links coming. I've got front and rear stiffening pieces coming. So if you guys want to see all of that, be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.